Okay, so um, just because we only have the hour, we're going to get started and some other people might join us along the way. But a very warm welcome this evening. Um, we decided a few months back that it was time to get together for some sharing and inspiration. And a thank you to Fear Trees Wales for partnering with us on the event. Um, and also to Stefan Donnelly from Fair Trade Foundation for joining us tonight and to all of you. Um, yeah, we have got limited time because we didn't want to keep you for any longer than an hour this evening. Um, it is an informal meeting. We're expecting around about 25 um, people. But just when it comes to asking questions or um, joining in discussions, if you might be able to just pop your digital hand up, please. So to do that, just as a refresher, down the bottom of your screen, if you hover down there, you'll see a reactions button. And if you click on that, you can raise your hand there and you can also put it down. And that'll just be easier um, in terms of managing discussions. Um, and also just so that everyone gets uh, a chance to speak, um, We'll just keep an eye on who's got their hands up. Um, also, just to say, if you don't mind staying on mute unless you are speaking, that would be helpful. Um, we also have 10 minutes at the end of the session just for question and answer and discussion. Um, and also just to say that um, I've got an email to follow up the meeting with lots of links in it, links that we'll be discussing this evening and more that might come into the chat or from yeah, other people's uh, talks. I'll capture all of the chat and send all of the links afterwards. And Caden, would you like to welcome your campaigners? Yes, thanks, Catherine. Naswaith uh, Arpaub or Gymru. Good evening, everyone from Wales. Um, if you're from Wales, I'm sure you're aware of who I am, but um, the communications and uh, community officer at Fair Trade Wales. Um, and yeah, I just want to say a huge uh, deal, a huge thank you to Catherine at the Scottish Fair Trade Forum for organising tonight's event. Um, and yeah, just yeah, echoing Catherine's words, this can be a good opportunity to go through those different um, sort of categories of how you can renew being a Fair Trade town. So hopefully this event will help with some of those as well. Um, but also, you know, this year we're celebrating 15 years as a as the world's first fair trade nation. Um, so there's, you know, lots of activities happening in Wales. Hopefully you can get some inspiration from today. Um, and Stefan's going to talk about some of the other celebrations happening um, this year as well. Um, but yeah, cross up our welcome. Excellent. Thanks, Kaden. And let's move on to the next slide. So just a quick explainer, you will have received the agenda for the meeting, which explained the structure. But we um, we are looking at the uh, fair trade community's five campaign areas just to structure discussion, um, and this get together I guess is a kind of follow on from um, a similar get together that the foundation held last year, um, which you can still watch online and the link will be there for that, um, and you can also read a bit more about these five campaign areas in the. Campaigners Action Guide, again, the link will be um, sent out for that. So, just um, to welcome Stefan again, and a big thank you, and I'm going to stop sharing my screen and hand over to Stefan just for the next 10 minutes. So, Stefan, have you got access there, okay? I do, yes. Um, so, yes, thanks, everyone. Um, and I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about some of the things um, that we're planning um, for this year at the Fair Trade Foundation. Um, so bear with me a second and I'll share my screen. Uh, it's a couple of slides to go through, but appreciate we don't have long um, and want to make sure we have time to chat. So I will I'll rush through these, but do put questions in the chat if you have any. Um, so yeah, you're hearing probably quite a lot about anniversaries uh, tonight as uh, one of our big focuses this year is it's the 30th anniversary of the fair trade mark appearing on uh, shelves in the UK. Um, and so why is that a big deal and what are we going to use that to do? Well, I think like all anniversaries of this nature, it's 
probably twofold. We want to celebrate everything that Fair Trade Choice has achieved and is still achieving and is enabling farmers and workers uh, over 2 million now across the world to do. And we also want to challenge ourselves and to challenge the public and companies and politicians on how much is still left to do. Um, 30 years in, trade is, of course, still not fair. Um, so in very brief summary, what is our focus going to be? Um, well, it's, it's really going to be those core issues um, in terms of what we'll be talking about of fair trade um, that you'll all be familiar with. So at the heart of it, price, that's the thing that above all else, fair trade as a certification mark as a campaign is best known for. And we'll be celebrating the security and the stability that fair trade pricing has given communities, the power it's enabled them, the, the change it's enabled them to drive locally, uh, to take on challenges like poverty, exploitation and climate change. Um, but calling on global trade systems and people with power to influences as a whole um, to change and, and calling them out really and continue that that continues to die millions, the chance to earn enough for the essentials. And the other part of this that appears um, is power. Um, so maybe something we've not spoken as much about in, in recent years, but um, recognising that the voice and the needs and ambitions of farmers in countries most affected by unfair trade is still too often ignored. They don't get a seat at the table when the big decisions on trade are made. Um, and really speaking up about the fact that global issues like the climate crisis will only be resolved if the rights, expertise and agency of farmers is respected and are given the space to shape the future of trade. And finally, um, trying to bring some urgency to that message. So this all change needs to happen now. We're seeing that increasingly climate change underlines that fact. So there's increasingly unstable global food supplies. Um, but we also need to make that core mission of fair trade that I've been talking about, fair prices and more powers for the communities uh, at, the, at the roots of the supply chains. That needs to feel urgent as well, because it is. Um, you might also remember uh, we've spoken quite a lot about climate in the past couple of years, done a lot of climate campaigning, and we will be continu continuing with that as well. Um, and specifically, we'll be centering in a bit more on the role that fair trade farmers can play in preventing deforestation. So sometimes the crops associated with fair trade are associated with deforestation. So we really want to make the point that actually, if you uh, pay people fairly, give them the opportunities and training and support to take on deforestation. Uh, it's actually fair trade farmers like uh, Bismarck here, who the quote is from, can be a real force um, for good in tackling deforestation. So um, it's a quote there, but we plant more trees, different varieties of mango, avocado. Some of this is for economic use, some is for protection of the fields. Uh, he's a, a real expert in uh, what they call agroecology, um, which is not only not deforesting uh, local areas, but actually reforesting local areas and protecting the land. And so particularly people in Scotland might remember um, Bismarck actually came to COP26 um, to speak about some of these issues uh, in Glasgow a couple of years ago and has been very much practicing what he preached in the past few years. Uh, and we're still in touch with him, sort of hoping um, to get a bit more content uh, and videos and quotes and stuff from him over the past uh, next year or so. So that's what we'll be talking about. This is a bit of a map of when we'll be talking about it. Um, so very soon, you'll be seeing a bit of a relaunch of our climate campaign, speaking a bit more about deforestation. That will lead quite nicely into a big focus we have around coca and chocolate for Easter, for fairly obvious reasons, um, Easter eggs, basically. But um, also because that, that's an area where there's a lot of challenges, but also a lot of opportunities in deforestation. Uh, World Fair Trade Day then uh, happens in May, and again, with, with it being 30 years of the Fair Trade mark and being a big anniversary, we want to make that um, a big day where people can celebrate Fair Trade generally. Um, great Big Green Week, um, I, I think it's called, sometimes anyway called something different in Scotland, but it is a coalition campaign of lots of different organisations with an interest in uh, taking action on climate change. And uh, so we'll be working closely with a lot of different organisations um, to, to get involved in that. And the theme this year, I think this has been announced, um, but sneak preview if it hasn't been, is the big swap. So making a climate positive swap, um, which obviously works very well for fair trade in that swapping to fair trade is a climate positive action. 
Um, and also we'll be encouraging campaigners to swap their knowledge with other local groups. So perhaps telling a local RSPB group um, about the benefits of fair trade and learning from them um, about birds or whatever they talk about. Um, and then later in the year, of course, we have fair trade fortnight, which you've probably all heard now has moved to the autumn. Um, and then again, it will be, there'll be more to come on that in the next couple of months, but short will be asking people to really amplify those messages that I mentioned earlier, uh, run events in your area, just get the word out there about 30 years of fair trade and the challenges still to come. And then finally, the, the big moment will be putting out, trying to make a big noise around is COP29 uh, at the very end of the year, which is in Germany this year. So I just highlight those as the major moments where you can expect stuff coming out of the Fair Trade Foundation. Um, but that's not to say that um, campaigners can't and won't be doing stuff the rest of the year. Um, so this was just something we, we looked at a few weeks ago of trying to find um, what days have campaigners um, or, or what time periods have campaigners used to get the message out on fair trade. And this is just a handful of dates. You know, there were, I think, over 700 events that we, we tracked. I'm sure there are lots more that campaigners ran last year. Um, so yeah, things around Black History Month, days like International Coffee, International Tea Day, International Women's Day. Um, so we may not be producing our own resources for this, but we definitely encourage you, um, and maybe these conversations will happen later, to, to use these days if you can. Uh, and to underline that point, Fair Trade Fortnight has moved. I know it doesn't work uh, ideally for everyone. Um, for example, some schools find it a little early in the term, uh, universities as well. Um, so, uh, but don't let that stop you um, running an event, run events at any time. These are two events I, I just had a look this week that have happened. Um, great events, I've both got media coverage. I think I found one in Scotland and one in Wales, and then I've got to note down what they were, but hopefully someone will recognize their work there. Um, and nearly done here, but um, just to find out, to summarize some of the ways to get involved, there will be ways to get involved in all those campaign moments I mentioned earlier. So World Fair Trade Day, Great Big Green Week, um, the, uh, the relaunch of our climate campaign. Um, but there's also some other ways um, you can do that. We've got two new schools resources I'll, I'll show you in a moment. Um, we're working on developing a map, which has been a big old project, but I think will be really useful in helping our groups and uh, a couple of each other. Um, we, uh, of course, as someone mentioned earlier, uh, lots of groups have been renewing over the past year on the new uh, portal that we created, the community space. Um, and that's, um, I think most groups got an extension to May. So if you're still to do that, um, please have a look at that. Um, and we've also created two blogs, one particularly for schools, stop scrolling through these, and one for campaigners generally on 30 ways to celebrate fair trade. So we're going to make the map look a little bit better than this, but and remove those ones that are floating in the North Sea. But the this is the map of um, fair trade communities that we're going to share. Um, we can only share the ones where people have given us permission to share, so it may not be complete, but um, over the next year or so, we'd hope that will that'll fill out. Um, you may have also noticed we've started doing a, a Campaigner of the Month award, so High Wickham was the inaugural one uh, last month, so look out for those and uh, feel free to send us nominations um, of yourself or any other groups um, for that. These are the two new school resources, which I, I thought I'd highlight. Um, one is a new film uh, about focused on fair trade and climate change, but also the benefits of fair trade generally, and focusing on banana farmers in Colombia. It's released uh, just earlier this month. And we also have a new fair trade map, which has some interactive QR codes and up to date profiles on the different crops and the different challenges uh, and the different benefits that people see from fair trade around the world. And we can include links to, to all of this as well. Um, and yeah, this is the 30 ways to celebrate fair trade, just some ideas um, to get you started, some tailored for schools, some for general use. I think that might be it. Um, no, but actually, um, Catherine has mentioned these, the fair trade action guide, worth checking that out. And there's also a selection of case studies for each of those action areas that we'll be looking at in a moment on our website um, for some more inspiration. 
Um, and this, yeah, uh, again, just an example, I'll also um, share a link to our guide of getting media coverage. And there's just a couple of examples of um, as towns have renewed to be able to get coverage. And I think the one on the right there is in the BBC, uh, the other one's in, in some uh, local or national media. Um, and yeah, that's just a few more examples. Cool. I hope that was the time, Catherine. Sorry, I tried to push sure. the Absolutely bang on time. Thank you. Thank you. That's, that's great, Stefan. Thank you. And um, yeah, I have watched uh, the new film and it's excellent. The, the Funchal Climate Change film. So yeah, I recommend that to everyone. So we're going to move on to look at action area one and, and get some discussion or questions going. So this area is all about consumer action, so encouraging the purchase and use of fair trade products. So it's about asking local retailers, businesses, shoppers to buy, stock or use fair trade products. So perhaps a focus for discussion will be those who run stalls or uh, put together directories, church events, selling fair trade or schools, etc. So, um, Obviously, we saw um, Tradecraft uh, leave last year, but I know that in Scotland, we have quite a few organisations who have put together sort of stall packages. So including the One World Shop, True Origin, Gavin's Mill, Rainbow Turtle and others sort of ready made stall packs. Um, so if anyone knows of any others or there's equivalent things anywhere else, we'd like to hear about them. So I guess I'm just going to open the floor and ask the question, has anyone been running stalls um, or has anyone encouraged local retailers to stock fair trade or is there any input from anyone in this particular area? Questions, anything at all? Karina, you've got your hand up. Do you want to kick off? Yeah, so just to say um, in our um, area, so I, I stay in Kinross and we've been fortunate we've been allowed to have a stall at the Kinross Farmers Market. Um, and that's been you know, a really good way of selling um, fair trade products um, a lot from True Origin, because apart from, as Catherine mentioned, the, the pack, you can also just buy uh, if you buy £150 worth, you get 10% off. So that helps in terms of being able to kind of um, manage it. Obviously, you still need to have quite a lot of uh, sales. Um, but the the other thing we've discovered is that some farmers markets are very um, restrictive and won't let you sell fair trade goods so if they are very sort of... So things like our Perth farmers market, they only allow people who make... Um, to actually grow the produce or make it locally. So there's definitely a variety there, but we've had other ones in the kind of wider pressure area um, where they're much more they're happy for us to sell fair trade um, goods because we obviously explain that, you know, things like rice and, um, you know, things that are from Kenya and, Malaya, you know, we're not in direct competition with the local um, sort of products. So it's definitely something that I would say you know, has been good for, for us from the point of view of selling products, but also we're using it as part of a Perth and Kinross uh, fair trade group as our way of going to different places in Perth and Kinross to kind of spread the news about fair trade. So we've uh, so we're um the, the, I came in on this one because we're working towards our we are boosting fair trade badge. So we're hoping to get that this year. And that's one of the things that we're doing. Excellent. Thanks, Karina. I actually wanted to ask, and I have been meaning to Google, but haven't got around to it yet. Is there a, a sort of central way that you can find out where all farmers markets take place or, or is it really just down to your local area and knowing that there's one there? I, I don't know. I know for our area, it was sort of, we knew of various places where they ran and then we you know, Googled and found the contact. Um, but I don't know if there's a I'm not sure if there is because I think they're all quite different. I think. Okay, okay. So we have a hand up um, with the name. See it? <laughs> you want to go ahead? It's T Heather, actually. It's short for. <laughs> okay, Fair Trade Wales. When I was 
in England, I used to go to farmers markets sometimes, and uh, they always want you to sell local produce. Well, my hobby was making candy floss, and I use fair trade sugar, which I bought in the town where I was selling it. Therefore, it's local produce. Um, also, jam making. If you use fair trade sugar, you can make homemade fair trade jams and marmalades. So there's ways of getting round all these rules. That's a great idea, I like that. <laughs> Anyone else like to input? I think Stefan has popped in the chat some uh, suggestions on tree craft alternatives on your website as well. So that's excellent. That's great. Yeah, so I don't think there's anyone from Fair Trade, uh, Lindsay Fair Trade here. Uh, Karina, you might have some insight, but I believe that um, over the Christmas period, they made um, over £2,000 worth of sales going to churches and other sort of Christmas events and selling Fair Trade products. Um, so I, I found that pretty impressive. So I don't know if anyone else has got. Um, any other examples of over Christmas times, uh, fair trade stalls and sales? If not, I think we will. Yeah. Or oh, and sell fair trade product at Christmas time. Say that again, Craig. Oxfam. Oxfam. Yeah, they sell oh. cafe direct and the fine coffee. And the might and thirty bought up my fudge and stuff like that. Oh, awesome! That's great. And you work in the the Oxfam shop, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Thanks for that, Craig. That's brilliant. A good suggestion. And Anne, you've got your hand up. Uh, yeah, I just want to say that my regular church stall in my own church, the one before Christmas, was a complete and utter disaster. I made less than ten pounds of sales in December. Uh, don't know why. Well, probably because I didn't have Christmas cards. Because I usually sell a lot of Christmas cards, and you know, because you weren't, it wasn't the way you could get them from Trade Craft, where you could get a discount on buying them in bulk. Um, if Transform Trade, basically, you were paying for them up front and that sort of thing. And I just can't sell like that. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, I was really very, very disappointed um, and very disheartening. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, so it's struggling to buy um, for like in bulk for a, a good price. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and what about, so Caden had um, put some notes down just about a uh, co-op own brand um, fair trade products like chocolate and yeah. things being pretty competitive. Um, so I was just would would where would you get your your chocolate and stuff? And since um we no longer have tree craft, oh chocolate. I mean I can still get the chocolate from uh, places like Ethical Superstore, uh. But there's a co-op just along the road from from my church. It's you know five minutes walk. So if mm -hmm. folk are going to buy co-op, they're going to go there rather than me getting co-op stuff in. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to make a, a note about um, the, the bulk uh, orders. Okay, so let's move on to um, action area number two, and it's over to Caden. Yes, thank you, Catherine. Um, and just quickly on the last one as well, we did run an event uh, sort of last year now um, online for Campaigns in Wales. Um, but it might be relevant for campaigns in Scotland as well, just sort of looking after Tradecraft um, and what support is out there for, um, you know, I know a lot of groups have stalls in churches, for instance, and what support's out there and where you can go for sort of alternatives. So once um, once we send an email around after today's event, I'll make sure that link is in there as well. Um, 
But yes, over to action area two, which is all about uh, sort of connecting fair trade. And this is networking and partnering with other individuals and groups sort of within the fair trade movement, but also beyond that as well. Um, and yeah, it's really about bringing fair trade campaigns together. Um, and that's what we're doing right here now. We, uh, this event is part of that action area to um, you know, bring a fair trade campaign as a groups together to connect. Um, and this will therefore count towards fair trade communities renewals um, just by attending today's event. Um, so some ways you can yeah sort of connect with other groups um we do have the national campaigners committee which sits at a uk level um and we are currently looking for a new ncc rep for wheels so if anyone is interested do let me know um but the national campaigners committee basically feeds back campaigners voices into the fair trade foundations plans um so with the upcoming 30 year celebration of the fair trade mark and this is one way that those um, representatives on the NCC will be feedback in, feeding back, sorry, um, campaigners' yeah wishes and um, voices into those into those plans. Um, so I'm just wondering if anyone has any yeah success in connecting with fair trade. Um, so this could be with maybe you know connected fair trade with schools in the area, or it could be with groups sort of outside of the fair trade movement, maybe. You know, eco food projects, uh, social justice movements, scouts, guides, um, any youth groups in their areas, those sort of things. Um, I know in Wales, I know Cathy's here from Dinos Poets, but uh, in Wales, in the Vale of Glamorgan, we've had quite um, a lot of success with groups partnering with local councils. Um, and I know it was in Stefan's slides earlier, I noticed, um, but basically every year the Vale of Glamorgan fair trade groups led by the Dinas Powers group um, launch a Vale of Glamorgan fair trade art exhibition and competition um, and this is connecting them with the various groups within that county um, also connecting with the various councils schools and then also our senate members and um, the minister for social justice in Wales so that's been very effective in connecting with different groups outside of the traditional fair trade movement um, and bringing young people together to sort of learn about fair trade but also create something and display something and then you know having some sort of recognition over the art that they've they've created um I wonder if anyone's got any examples maybe from Scotland or anyone else in Wales if you want to pop your hand up um Uh, Matthew, you've got your hand up first. So I'm just trying to start the video so you can see me as well. With a bit of luck. Maybe not. I think Wait. it's I think it's loading, but we, we can hear you fine, Matthew. Yeah, good. Okay. I mean We can't hear you right now, Matthew. We could hear you. Um, I did see someone else had their hand up as well. Um, but they've put their hand down now. Did anyone else want to come in? Um, Len Sheena? Hi, Caden. So Hi. we're from Newcastle Emlyn in West Wales. Um, we try very hard to connect with people outside of the fair trade movement who share common interests. So we have, in Fair Trade Fortnight last year, we did the refreshments in the monthly repair cafe. So, you know, that was a good way of reaching a lot of people who obviously have a interest in sustainability, you know, to make them see because sometimes there can be a bit of a well, especially in a rural area like ours to feel like green issues the answer is to entrench and just make everything local and sort of make these little enclaves that are safe and green but you know you have to make the point about global responsibility as well so it's very important to make the link between fair trade and climate justice and the climate crisis as well and also we worked well you and Aileen were there when we planted 
trees in a meadow that the town council or a wild space meadow that the town council were making and we've supported the art installation that they're putting in that space as well you know, we've run um workshops for children to make art to go as part of that great thank you lenshina yeah um lots of examples uh clearly a very busy busy group in wheels um alison i think you were next if you want to come in yes hopefully i've unmuted uh, yeah we've had a very successful partnership with um our local the cinema that is run by our local council uh, so they have a the, the, a tradition of of showing you know not just showing um the latest blockbusters but uh, um, um, a very um, able film officer who finds films uh, with a fair trade theme uh, and uh, we've been so we've been able to show quite a lot of films uh, um, we just got one coming up um, called Fashion Reimagined um, and we're linking with a local organisation that's been uh, doing quite a lot of work about fashion so that's our sort of thing that we've been doing that's that's excellent Alison um it'd be great if you could maybe pop in the chat some recommendations for others and what kind of films maybe sort of intersect with the um the fair trade movement just to give some inspiration to others um and before I come back to you Matthew I think Enid you did have your hand up um if you want to come in um I think you're just on mute Hello. Great. Can you hear me now? Yes, yeah, we can. I, I, I live in Mould and we have um, we are a fair trade town. And before COVID, we were meeting regularly. There was a, a, a committee run by the town council at the time. And um, we were quite active also with them. Um, we had a stall in the um, food. The, Mould has a, a food fair in September and this last September our church um, happens to be sort of by the entrance of the more or less of the, of the food fair and we had a fair trade stall and one of the Christian aid um, representatives from North Wales was uh, getting people to taste the different coffees available so that was quite a successful day and we sold quite a lot of fair trade products but since you know since the demise of trade craft it's very difficult to obtain uh, a stock of uh, fair trade goods um, and to be able to sell them before you pay for them you know that was the advantage with with trade craft maybe that was one of the reasons why the the um, you know model didn't work very well but now I'm I'm sort of struggling. I have to buy the products mainly from ethical superstore, um, and I'm looking for somewhere else where possibly I could buy, you know, not not in a huge bulk, uh, but in um, a stock that's mm -hmm. there's possible a ten percent discount or whatever in order to pass some money on to transform trade. Yeah, 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 definitely. Um, yeah, deal, deal, it. Um, yeah, closer. Yeah, I think. Uh, if, well, if you want to drop me an email, I can sort of point you in the direction of some places in Wales that you might be able to buy stuff. Um, but also, you know, there's places online which you've said, you know, ethical superstore, Prime Crest. There's also the the Fair Trade Warehouse. Um, but yeah, if, if if you want to drop me an email, I'll pop it in the the chat, and then I can sort of connect you with some some other place in Wales you might be able to buy stuff. Yeah. Um, I think that that's that was a great example there of connecting with the Christian aid. Um, you know, you could also connect with sort of Oxfam shops, um, mm -hmm. your local Oxfam groups. Um, but yeah, that was great. Dear uh, dear um, yeah. and Matthew, I'm going to come to you very quickly um, because I'm nearly run out of time on my section. Um, if you want to come in, apologies. My connection dropped a minute ago. Um, really, just. To say yes, we had an event at the school today, um, uh, children baking and um, teas and coffees for parents. 
uh, the kind of the, the more interesting part of that was we had a, a meeting on Zoom with a fair trade producer, which we organised last year, where the ch all the children met him. Uh, and they were able to ask him questions about life in Malawi, and their plan today from their uh, their so-called We Brew is that they are going to send the money that they raised to that to the school that was was actually paid for with fair trade premium funds. So they, you know, there's a really good connection going on between our wee school in Dunsker and the school in Malawi, which seems to be continuing, which is really good news. That's excellent news, Matthew. Um, yeah, congratulations on making that partnership there. Um, okay, I'm going to pass back to Catherine, who's going to come in on action area three. Catherine. Excellent. Yeah, and thanks everyone for input there. So um, this area is about the exchange of ideas um, about fair trade change makers. So growing political support for fair trade locally. Um, so it's about working with local council or government representatives for structural change, council resolutions to support fair trade procurements, joining the Scottish uh, Parliament cross-party group on fair trade, or perhaps Westminster's APPG, inviting councillors or MSPs, MSs, MPs to a meeting or event. Um, we have a few Scottish examples and um, the Scottish Fair Trade Forum does have a pledge to invite your MSP to support and that will be linked in the follow up email. But I would just like to ask anyone to come in who's had any success in this particular area. I know there's someone here that has. <laughs> Go on, Karina, would you like to come in? Hi, yeah, so our thing that which um, was suggested by one of our um, councillors, which I found really helpful, is we have, in Perkin Ross, we have 12 um, wards, and the suggestion was that we got a fair trade champion for each ward, and that has been so helpful. So we've got 12 um, people, and we got that by me emailing the sort of all the councillors in each ward and saying, would somebody volunteer to be the fair trade champion? And it wasn't a lot of work, but basically it was spreading the sort of fair trade message if we um, let them know something that was happening. And um, we found it so helpful in things like uh, when we asked if um, the Perth Kuros would join the Scottish Fair Trade Forum as a member. Um, the councillors, our Fair Trade champions had it sorted in under a week, which I just couldn't believe. They got it agreed that they would pay the, the money to join. And without those champions, then we wouldn't have, we might have had one person to go to, but having, so it's something that I would definitely say has been really helpful. Um, for us, and they're not all as active, you know. So, but the fact that we've got one for every ward, and the fact that about half of them are very active, has just been so helpful. Whenever we want to have contact with the council, we've got people to go to who actually come back and say, "Yep, I'll take that forward." So, it's been um, really, really, you know, it's worked well for us. Yeah, it really has. Um, anyone else like to come in? Has anyone um, tried what Karina's done and, and, and not managed or having the, the kind of opposite effect, uh, uh, experience from Karina? Alison, you've got your hand up. Oh, you're just muted just now, Alison. Sorry. <laughs> Hopefully that's better. Uh, yeah. We have ward officers who nominally have a, a an accountability for fair trade but it hasn't worked well um you know matthew you're you're in the same council area and you may not even know who your ward officer is um <laughs> so it, yeah that's it's not been 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 great um uh, we do have though <laughs> our kind of claim to fame is, is that uh, one of our our msps is the chair of the cross party group so he does turn up to everything if he possibly can. That's handy. So, uh, it, yeah, that's a that's a very good thing. Yeah, 
Um, well, if there's no other hands up for this one, I guess um, everyone probably knows about the Fair Trade Foundation's community declaration, which Stefan, I think, is still going. It's on somewhere over 17,000 signatures, but you're looking for 20,000. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, that's still that's still live. So yeah, definitely looking. It'd be great to to pass that twenty thousand mark. Um, so yeah, and that's one. Um, yeah, quite quick, an easy way to to engage with politicians. Yeah, um, yeah. And the other one, the other campaign is um transform trades, a uh, request to email your MP to ask for support for a fashion watchdog. And again, all these links are in the follow up email. So. Um, Karina, do you want to just let us know how you sort of first made contact, you know, ha what happened there? Um, yeah, so basically if I went on the uh, website for the council and looked at the list of all the um, names for each ward and then I emailed just the people in that ward and said, sort of, would um, one of you be the... Uh, volunteer to be the fair trade champion and sometimes I got a reply back really quickly um, and sometimes it took quite a few emails of things like saying right, I now have 10 out of the 12 wards you know it would be really great if we could have 20 you know and sometimes it took a bit longer but each time even when we've had new um, elections and there's been a change we've managed to kind of get back to having um, one fair trade champion for each ward so um, I think that definitely being able to just when you're only emailing something like four or five or you know people and they know that you know you're asking for one volunteer from that um, number that rather than a general one going to everybody, which I think would absolutely have been ignored, you know. And then we announce it, so we've got a newsletter, so we always put the names. It just comes out once a year, but we put the names of all our fair trade champions. Um, in the newsletter, you know, so the councillors are also getting acknowledged for um, having volunteered and, and so on. And they, some of them come to events, which is great. So then we've, we've had photographs taken and things that we've, um, and certainly at the beginning when we were just doing our initial getting a fair trade zone, we had some really good um, photos and photos taken by the council um, for our kind of um, first sort of announcing that we got the fair trade uh, zone status so you know there's definitely um things that you know help in terms of the media because you can get the council to help with with that so um and then i'll just as a wee plug for our film so we have our scottish fair trade forum had five films made last year one of them is um and they're all just two minutes long and maybe Catherine, you put a link into those so what I would say is that there's two that are made by uh, schools and one that was made by a college and they're really accessible for um, any school. It wouldn't matter where, where it was because you know, one's about going into shops and one's about fashion and the other is a great um, one from the college. And then our one was about um, trying to get fair trade uh, goods in school dinners so the kind of four out of the five are really accessible for kids the fifth one's a bit more business orientated but it's only two minutes so I would definitely say they're they're things that you could have a wee look at and and might be useful yeah I'll pop the link um in for those that's a good idea Karina thank you um excellent so I think we're going to move on to area number four because we're keeping nicely to time so Caden over to you Great, thank you. Um, yeah, so action area four is about fair trade ambassadors, and that's uh, really about you know deepening your own and others' understanding of how fair trade supports wider social change, such as uh, climate justice and global power um, balances. Um, so yeah, we think it might be interesting to ask uh, you know amongst the group if there's anything you've learned recently. Um, either, you know, as part of your group or maybe attending some other group's events. Um, I remember two years ago for Fetrid Fortnight in Wales, we looked at the sort of intersection between fashion, climate change, fair trade, and then race. Um, 
and yeah, and really looking at you know the the production and the the producing of sort of cotton, but then also you know which Fairtrade International looks at a lot, um, but then also looking at you know artisans who create things from um, maybe cotton or other items, you know, and then looking more at like the World Fair Trade Organization, um, their 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 logo on things, um, and I know Lenshina was part of that. Um, that uh, online event and that, again I will post the the link to that um recording in the email that we'll be following up with um but again as Stefan's already said there's you know sort of fair trade touches on so many societal issues whether it is you know women's rights or you know particularly the climate crisis um and obviously that's going to be a focus again this year for the the fair trade foundation um, but yeah, I wondered if anyone has recently been learning or been teaching others about some of those sort of issues that maybe extend beyond fair trade, but you know, obviously have some sort of connection to fair trade. Um, did anyone want to come in on this one? I'll I'll kick it off. Um, Karen, just there's a, I probably shared it in events before, but there's a blog post from the Fair Trade Foundation. Um, and it's called um, Eight Ways That Fair Trade Protects the Environment. I'll put the, the link in the chat just now. Um, but I really like it because, um, I mean, it, it shows that the fair trade standards um, help with protection of the environment, basically. And it, and it goes through eight different ways, things like wildlife conservation projects, climate um adaptation training, reforestation projects, prohibiting the use of agrochemicals, growing crops and trees together, increasing biodiversity. Um, and I think it just gets the message across that fair trade farmers are leading the way in, in when it comes to protecting their own land and the future of their crops. Um, and I just always think blogs with numbers of things are easily accessible for reading and yeah I really like that one so um over to anyone else I think lynchina has got her hand up so in terms of learning something um so I'm also chair of BAFS which is the UK network member of the World Fair Trade Organization and our conference last year in Birmingham we had a talk from a professor who's expertise is, is in slavery and he gave a talk about him and two students gave a talk about how Birmingham you know what their involvement in campaigning against the fair trade uh, against slavery and one of their campaigning methods was they made cotton bags tote bags with a logo on them the same way as we do now for every you know, campaign they had tote bags <laughs> And they also boycotted sugar and they managed to get a massive boycott of sugar that was produced by slavery. And, you know, it's absolutely fascinating to think even then they were doing campaigning in um, a very similar way. Great. Thank you, Len Sheena. Um, I didn't I didn't know that, so I've learned that today. Um, but if anyone else has any sort of links to resources, um, or, you know, anywhere we can, you know, all of us learn um, more on these important issues. Do pop them in the chat, um, as I'm sure they're, yeah, going to be useful for everyone. Um, on the Federal Rails website, we've got a little blog section as well, which we've, you know, written similar things to Catherine said about Federal and the Environment or Federal and, um, like, it's links with Fashion Revolution Week and talking about, as I said earlier, the links between Federal and Fashion. Um, yeah, can I mention I'm sorry yeah, 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 the yes. hand button anyway um but um yeah I, I was just going to mention um similar to ours that there's a thankfully a lot of our campaigning groups produce really interesting stuff on the on the some of the climate justice messaging that we we talk about so we we often look at a lot of Oxfam have a really good report I'll put the link into the chat about you know some of the stats we've used in our campaigning that um yeah, the the well the lowest earning 50 percent of the population only contribute 10 percent or two of the total climate emissions um and, and lots of stats like that that sort of make it obvious 
why um, fair trade um, and why inequality, why fair trade talks about these issues and why inequality and climate change are so linked. Um, and the other one I was reading recently, Christian Aid have done a, a report on specifically looking at, I think it's coffee and um, some of the, the impacts of climate um, on some of the, the farmers that we work closest with, um, but also how if they earn a decent amount, they can, um, yeah, they they are actually able to change practices to adapt and, and take on climate change. So I'll put those in just as really interesting background reading to some of this. Um, yeah, look, those are probably my, my two shirts. Great, thank you, Stefan. Um, and I think that's it for action area four, Catherine, if you want to, yeah, kick us off with the last action area. Yeah, thank you, everyone. So um, this one is exchange of ideas um, on fair trade influencers. So growing support for fairer trade in the digital space. So um, it is useful to look at the Fair Trade Foundation's digital and social media guide. I think that's a, a real helpful document. Um, and then, yeah, I guess it's considering what your network, if you if your group has a Facebook page, I feel that um, photos, lots of photos of people doing things there are always, always go down well, but um, is also an opportunity to share others' posts, so other fair trade groups or um, posts that come from Fair Trade Fortnite or from the World Fair Trade Organization, Fashion Revolution, Fair Trade Wales um, Foundation, ourselves. Um, and I know that there's a campaign, Caden, that you had mentioned to me, but Sharon's had to leave. So Fair Trade and Football campaign is. It's quite a good one, a good example of a social media campaign. But um, just to open up any uh, comments or, or questions about um, digital campaigning or yeah, experiences that have gone well. Or any questions? I think I can come in uh, quickly, Catherine, just to pick up on yeah, the Fair Trade Football campaign. So that that started in Pembrokeshire in Southwest Wales. Um, and unfortunately, Sharon has dropped out of the meeting now. Um, but I mean, I guess they sort of do two action areas. They do partner with local football teams um, to run Fair Trade Football competitions, but also have their football matches using Fair Trade Footballs in Kilgetty. Um, but then they do have a, a Facebook uh, sort of page as well that they share all this information through. And again, Catherine, they share others' uh, information and posts into those as well. So it's sort of, you know, bringing other people's posts to their audiences. Um, but I think it works particularly well for them that they sort of partner with um, that football team, that they're able to get that message out then beyond maybe sort of like their traditional groups um, or traditional groups in fair trade. Um, yeah, so that, that's one one good example of, of that. That's great. I'd like to know if anyone's had any success in um, increasing the number of younger people, uh, younger people following them on their Facebook groups or, um, yeah, or linking up with any other uh, groups on social media. Alison, you've got your hand up. Yeah, it's just to say that um, the advice that we were given by some of our younger friends was Instagram. Uh, uh, and oh, I'm getting some nods from <laughs> rather bad. Um, and it's possible to link your Facebook page and your Instagram page uh, yeah. so that you can post on 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 both. Yeah. Um, so, so that's a, just... I wouldn't say we're we're great at it, but we do try try a bit. Yeah. Has anyone ventured into TikTok? Because that's the next step for us. <laughs> <laughs> no hands up. Uh, yeah. okay. Hysterical. I can say some ask, ask another question just for, for one moment. Um, we recently gave up our website. Um, we'd had a group website for many years. Um 
and it was getting difficult to maintain and um, quite expensive, but it was quite a big, big decision for us to give it to give it up, partly because it was where our, um, our, our, our directory resided. So what we've what we've done with that is to make um, some pinned posts on our Facebook page that, you know, here's a list of cafes, here's a list of, of shops uh, locally. Okay. Um, but I just wondered whether people had, had um, we found we weren't getting many people looking at it at either. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Gil, were you going to come in? Yeah, I was hysterically going to say I can't even find a way to put my hand up, which is really quite a sad confession. Um, can Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Okay, I'm just bl blether on. I agree about Instagram. I have three not so kid kids anymore, and um, they have watched me, you know, struggle through the world of social media. But actually, that is exactly the way in to find two sympathetic early 20 somethings and if they post something on Instagram you are really cooking on gas even with you know a small catchment but you I just kind of feel out there that you have you have raised the flag that a bit higher linking in loads of sort of um you know vimpted and sort of uh, second hand I guess we'd call it fashion but there's such a huge um you know market and interest out there in the 20 somethings um, and they are my absolute ballast for when I think we're losing the war. But actually, there's there's a huge amount of interest if we find the right pin, which probably doesn't involve counsellors and things, but it definitely does involve the rights and the wrongs of the world. Um, so I, I do think Instagram is a fabulous platform because it's so visual and it's quick. And TikTok, I'm terrified of, have no idea. But yeah, Instagram, I'm kind of working with with a bit of help. Excellent. So we all need um, a couple of 20 year olds uh, to share, share some posts for us. That's some great advice. Karina, you've got your hand up. Yep. I was just going to say that um, the people that I found most helpful for my social media, um, Facebook and um, Twitter, have been our co op member pioneers because, and I don't know if that's the same across. The whole of the UK, if, if you the same in Wales and England, but certainly in Scotland, our co-op member pioneers tend to have some sort of a social media um, presence in which they post things about their um, shops and what they're doing locally. But then they often also put things about fair trade. And if I put something about fair trade, they are more likely to like it and share it than pretty much anybody else so I've found so if you can find your co-op member pioneers and sort of follow them and and kind of then that's a I, I found helpful so great thanks Karina and I'll, I'll pop um link into where you can find your member pioneer Stefan you've got your hand up yeah just to to go a bit more old school I suppose one of the other things we've seen a lot of success on recently of course as we started tracking this is the amount of local media coverage that local campaigners have been able to generate um and although maybe there's not as many local newspapers around there's still a lot of like online local coverage and it's generally not too difficult to get in there so we're seeing six seven uh articles a week that are coming in um because campaigners have done something in the local area told a local journalist about it um and yeah so that will then sometimes get picked up and go into national coverage as well so it really does drive quite a lot of reach and, and more people reading about fair trade so I'll, I'll put another link in the chat which is just a bit of a guide and some templates that you can use to make that really easy so it's like local group has milestone and you can put in what you want to say um so yeah that that's another thing we've seen be very successful across the UK recently. That's excellent and probably quite heartwarming to hear that we can still um, get some media coverage like that. Yeah, that would be useful, Stefan. Um, any other points before we just move on to general, you know, any question, any comments? No, that's great. Well, thanks for the input. So just we've got about um, 10 minutes or so, we don't need to fill it all, but just open to any questions, challenges, successes, points, 
um, anything at all, please, please do put your hand up or, or if you're having trouble putting your hand up, just unmute and, and ask a question. think we've got oh we do then Sheena you have your hand up oh and there's one other as well um Kathy who was first I was on the different page um so let Sheena on you go and then we'll move to Kathy well just a quick question for Stefan um we we want to do our new community status but we can't get a login and every email we've sent saying please can we get the details to log in hasn't been we haven't had a response is there any way we can get that okay um yeah sorry about that I, I thought I replied to, to yours then Sheena so I will personally look into that because I remember um doing it so that's not sent or stuck somewhere um but yes um I will um look into that and thank you thank you sorry about that that's okay okay and Kathy Hi, um, yeah, kind of, Stefan again, sorry. <laughs> um, that I'm really inspired with what people are saying tonight that actually we should be on Insta. I use Twitter, wondering why on earth, and um, using Facebook. Um, but just thinking, you know, you're saying it really is a place to be, which is a big learning curve for me. Um, so, Stefan, I mean, is this what Fair Trade Foundation are finding as well? That actually, Instagram's a way you can find your twenties. Um, have you killed off some of your media streams? You know, or is X on its way out or whatever? What do you reckon? Yeah, I mean, probably the um, that's what we've found. Younger people um, will be on Instagram. We've sort of experimented a bit with TikTok, but not really. We dipped our toes in there um so yeah that's where we would yeah get most of our younger person engagement but um there's we still have a very big following on facebook so would still use that and the way people behave is maybe slightly different on that so often like when we have petitions we get a lot of signatures from facebook not so much from instagram but instagram is maybe reaching more people and they're talking more about the issues so it's slightly different on on each platform um, but yeah at the minute those are still the, the the three big ones we're using on instagram facebook and and twitter x so i think that might be one we absolutely phase out over time same, same here <laughs> yeah what what's um what do we think about anyone want to say anything else about instagram is it is it just a step too far or does it seem like something your group would be able to to get going and i don't understand instagram can't is it not just a one to one no no so um it's i mean uh, help me out everyone else but it's it's focused more on the image um so you can you can put up like a set of images and and then you just flick through the images um, and you can tag lots of people in the image as well. So they get a message to look at it and then they can share it on. But it's very it's very much about a nice um, collection of photos um, or we've done a, a couple of um, sort of looks at two of the of the ten principles of fair trade and um, with. Um, a producer story behind it and it's mm. a set of photos that you can then tell a story as you click mm. through it um, and then there's other lots of other things you can do like uh, create uh, highlights and stories and, and stuff like that but um, yeah I think once you do your first couple you kind of start to get the hang of it um, but it's definitely where where young people are younger people can I just quickly ask, is it like Facebook that you don't register an account directly? So obviously we're all fair trade groups. Yeah. So it's, not, you know, we'll be wanting to be on there as a fair trade group. So is it like fair trade? Sorry, is it like Facebook where you can't like register your account? You have to actually be a person and just have a, is it like, yeah, is it like Facebook or is it 
more like Twitter as so far you, as the registration goes. <laughs> you can um you can make a, a login, Kathy. Yes. So it doesn't necessarily have to be linked to your Facebook. Um, you can link it to your Facebook. So you could make, for instance, Adina's post Instagram. Um, it wouldn't have to be like a, a Kathy Instagram and then linked. So you can make your own one um separate to it, like Twitter. It it is linked to somebody's Facebook account as an administrator. So um so when I you know when I go on I have to, to change from myself to to the to the fair trade the fair trade group. Oh. But uh, you can obviously pass Is that, that just about like a page on Facebook rather than a, a, a group then? Uh, yes. Okay. So that's an important distinction. Mm -hmm. um, so groups are on Facebook are um, literally groups of people who, mm -hmm. who all talk about the same the same kind mm -hmm. of thing. Um, a page is a more public thing mm -hmm. um, a more out outward facing. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, Inst Instagram is more like a page. Right. Thank you. Uh, but uh, it, it, as, once you've got going, it's reasonably straightforward. It, it uh, Instagram posts tend to have many, many more what they call hashtags on on them. So you have hashtag fair trade, um, hashtag fashion, um, et cetera, et cetera, depending on what you're talking about. Yeah, and I think um, a good thing is that you can set it up and before posting anything, you can just look through lots of organisations that you you have an interest in and just see what they're doing and, um, yeah, and then and put a wee plan in place for yourself. Um, but I don't know if it's the same for Fair Trade Wales and Fair Trade Foundation, but on Facebook for us, people love photos of people. Um, but then on Instagram, um, it's more sort of collections of really nice looking photos that seem to get attention. So, um, yeah, a few differences. Yeah, definitely. I think it depends on the platform. You have different people on different platforms. But um, yeah, I don't everyone go rush and just make an Instagram account for the sake of it, I guess. If, if you're already doing stuff on Facebook and that's working for you, I wouldn't, you know, now try and make an Instagram and... Um, you know, if that's if that's too much for you to do, then if it's better off, you just you know keep your focus and energy. I think on that one platform, if you are focusing on one. Um, but if you do feel like venturing to a new platform, then I think what we're saying is, yeah, we recommend maybe trying Instagram. Um, but uh, yeah, don't don't be too uh, scared to put off by it. And if it doesn't work, you don't have you know you can always delete the account or you know whatever. Um, that's a good point, Hayden. And just as I mentioned at the start, there's there's loads of fair trade content from other fair trade groups and I think it, it would be be great if we could get lots of fair trade groups um following each other and sharing all of their content that, that would be excellent and maybe when uh, the foundation's map is up and running and we know what all the communities are we can search for them on Facebook and follow and share posts and and the same sharing posts from the foundation and fair trade Wales and from ourselves um and World Fair Trade Organization, that's always and, and loads of you with groups are already doing all of that. So um that's great. So I think um we're nearly on time. So unless there's any final questions, um I am just going to say a really big thank you to everyone for coming along. Um, we are going to send out this email. I think I might wait till tomorrow because I know that um, Hayden's got a few things that he wants to send me to go in um, and I'm going to take all of the links out of the chat and pop them into the email as well. Um, there's also a really quick little survey. It takes under two minutes in the email and it's really just to get feedback on whether events like this um, although there are small numbers attending, whether they're useful, whether you'd like to see more of them. Um, thank you, Anne. Um, so that email, please look out for that tomorrow. And yeah, um, Caden? Yeah, just to echo that, yeah, say, thank you very much. 
Um, and I'll make sure I put all those those links into that email that I promised you all. Um, but yeah, Diolch, thank you for coming today. Uh, yes. Oh, sorry. Thanks very much, everyone. Uh, yeah, great to be here. Brilliant. Thank you. Well, thanks, everyone. And enjoy the rest of your evening and hope to see some of you very soon. Bye. Bye, Bye everyone.